course, that safety incident, I, I you, um, they're in the press frequently. And the big ones would be things like Texas City and Deepwater Horizon splashed across the newspapers, on the BBC News, no escaping from them. Um, when these incidents, events happen, there's a reaction. There's a reaction from the government, from the industry bodies to say, this is terrible, how do you prevent this from happening? And that reaction normally finds its way into regulation and guidance for these organisations to try and help them to avoid that them happen again. What's common across all of these guidelines like um, API 754 um, from the American Petroleum Institute or the CCPS guidance or HSG 254 is that they all strive to explain a process and method through which organisations can figure out what are the hazards that they're managing, i.e. What, what's the dangerous piece that they've got of the jigsaw, what do they not want to escape and what are they doing to prevent that from getting where it shouldn't be and then if it does get there, if there is some sort of incident, how can they recover from it quickly to mitigate the, the outcome, the, the damage that's caused to the environment or to the workforce or to cancer. As, as a result of all the uh, regulations and guidance talking, there has been a rush by organisations to do something about this and put in place measures and metrics. So the question has got to be, why? Why does it keep happening? The, um, the guidance is common. Identify your hazards, identify the barriers that you're, um, you've put in place within your business to prevent these hazards from, from being realised and identify the measures to, to give you some confidence whether the barriers are actually being effective or not. And a lot of organisations will illustrate that through the likes of a bow tie, the Swiss cheese model, something that shows graphically hazards surrounded by barriers, preventative or um, mitigation barriers, and in addition to that, some means of measurement of those, uh, those barriers. Well, it's quite clear that a lot of organisations have process safety management systems where they've designed them, they have identified the barriers, they've identified the measures, but what's not clear is have they established which of the barriers are most important and which of the measures are most important in terms of actually predicting or preventing an incident from happening. So that's key. The second thing is, what have they done with the information? Who sees it? Is it the boardroom, is it the management team, or is it the workforce, the wider workforce who can actually take an action on the day and prevent the incident? Until these issues are really addressed, until there's a risk view of the performance of the barriers and a wider audience having access to the information, I believe these incidents will continue to happen. The way we uh, approach this is we identify the hazards and barriers using tools existing tools in fact such as safety cases, reports, hazard studies and analysis. We then develop a suite of key performance indicators to, to look at how the barriers are performing and we apply a risk model and weighting to ensure that the right focus is on, on the key barriers and the key measures. And We present those through a management tool and that management tool is, is automated gathering data from um, existing source systems and is updated daily and it's available to the whole workforce and we also have displays in the form of the Swiss cheese and the bow tie so that it makes it easy and visible to see what the key hazards and risks are. The most critical part of this process is to apply the risk model, is to develop a process and a model that says not only do we know what we're measuring, what we're managing, but also we know the importance of the barriers and the importance of the measures so that when we have things, 10 things that are read, we know the one that we need to take action on right now. What's also equally important is who sees this information, how do they see it? Do they see it in a way that's all spreadsheets that they can um, make head and tail of? Do they see it in a 200 page report? Do they have to ask their boss for the information? Or can they, through a management tool that's regularly available to them, get access to the information which is accurate and up to date, so automated and daily, and also something that's available to them all from an internet page, for example, and something that's presented to them in a way that they can understand, so in a bow tie model. So actually show the hazard, actually show the barriers, actually show the performance of those barriers at the click of a button in a real time basis. 
We believe that taking organisations through this process allows them to link the performance indicators directly back to the hazards that they're there specifically to give performance and information on. We believe that that can be done through a tool that gives them it in their hands. A key point on the visibility is to make sure that we're not hiding any uh, issues in, in, in the company and also so that action can be taken immediately which ultimately prevents the major accident hazards such as the type we talked about earlier on. We've been fortunate enough to work with companies such as um, Scottish Power, Centrica Storage, Centrica Energy Upstream, Dong Energy, GDF Sous, uh, TACA, a host of companies who have asked us for help in the design and the implementation of their process safety management systems. Some of those companies have been able to drive real business benefit from their, um, from their efforts. They've been able to take uh, reductions in their operations and maintenance costs, they've been able to improve their plant availability, they've been able to improve their reliability, they've even been able to uh, decrease their insurance premiums. And it's all been through being able to understand where the effort needs to go through a risk model approach and be able to apply your activity where it really is going to matter.